What's going on guys? It is Average Player here and this is a little bit different as you guys can see I have a face cam going for once and this is for a ban list prediction for the May, I'm guessing May 2023 ban list. So we got multiple um, sections here. We got banned, limited, semi-limited, unlimited, and those are your typical um, sections for the ban list. That you would see cards and then a copium section where those are cards that I would hope and that I think in my opinion could come off the ban list unfortunately there's only a few cards in that because there's a lot of cards that I think but I don't want to sit there and create a lot of controversy so we're gonna start off with Orcus Tart Pour here and this can come to one test it out but I think I've been calling this for a while I've been wanting this card to come back for such a long time. I don't think that it's going to be very problematic. What deck is going to play at Phantom Knight? And my controller just fell. But what deck is going to play at Phantom Knight? I don't think that's really much of an excuse to to ban it. Phantom Knights already have really, a really good access to a rank 4 engine. And uh, given an additional uh, counter trap and crescendo to banish a card off a negate. Really isn't anything to say this card needs to stay banned. It makes it a little bit of a splashable engine, but I think it's absolutely fine. It can come back whole nine. Another one is Astrograph Sorcerer. I'm pretty sure this card can come to two. If I remember right, Astrograph Sorcerer is at two. Or is at one. So. Yes, it is. I'm pretty sure it can come to two. I think it would be completely fine because... Pendulum decks aren't playing this. Pendulum decks don't really play much anything, to be honest. But they, they don't... They're playing this, but it's not really making an impact. Pendulum is not best deck. I'm sorry, Triff, but it's not. Pendulum's not best deck anymore, so I don't see why Astrograph Sorcerer would still be at one. I'm pretty sure it can come to three. Another one, which is a weird card, Pot of Desires. Put it at three. Nobody wants to banish ten off the top of their deck anymore because the next card is even better. Um, banishing 10 off the top of your deck to draw 2 isn't that good anymore. And all the decks that were playing it were... Were like Striker and stuff like that. Most decks that played the card didn't care. But when most of the decks nowadays play a lot of Saki 1-ofs, you don't want to use it. So putting Pot of Desires in 3, I don't think it would really do anything. Nobody really wants to banish, banish 10 anymore. Because... Most of your pieces, when they're banished, especially face down, you can't get them back. So this is going to be a hot take. Pot, prod, that, pot of Prosperity to 1. And I'm saying Pot of Prosperity to 1 because it does get rid of a lot of consistency for most decks. Um, Sprite plays it. It adds a lot of consistency. Um, Flu play it. It adds a lot of consistency. A whole bunch of other decks play it because you're literally, you, you banish 6 from your extra deck. You get to look at six cards deep in your deck, and you get to choose one card out of them, add them to your hand, and shuffle. That's ridiculous. Pot of Duality only adds three, and you can't only reveals three, and you can't special summon. Banishing six from your extra deck doesn't really matter when most decks are playing two copies of each card in their extra deck just so they can play Pot of Prosperity. So Pot of Prosperity really doesn't do much. It's basically a free look in your deck for six in six cards and adding one of them to your hand. I think going to one, it makes it not. As easily available. I understand decks like Flu. They can pot of duality into the pot of prosperity. Dig even deeper. But they can't do that anymore. Instead they'll have to play cards like pot of extravagance. If they want to get um, a couple more cards. So that's why I think pot of duality can go down. It stops a lot of consistency. From most decks. That That's my main reason. My copium is called by the grave. Going to. Well called by the grave is a copium card. And I'm going to explain it going to two. I think it's fine. Called by the Grave really isn't used that much. Um, tier Limit isn't really that good of a deck anymore. If anything, there may be like a high, low tier 1, high tier 2. So they're not really that good anymore. So it doesn't really stop them. It stops Hand Traps, but Hand Traps really aren't good anymore. Um, the good Hand Traps in the game, Imperm, is a trap card that you activate to your side of the field. Ash discards, but most people playing multiple Hand Traps anyway. Like Ash, Imperm, Gamma. So it doesn't really matter. Called by the Grape, I think, can go to two. But that's just a copium thing. I think it's probably going to stay at one because Konami hates interaction. Red Reboot is another copium card. I think it can come off the ban list back to one. 
reason why I'm saying this is, if as soon as you notice Red Reboot got banned, a whole bunch of not fun decks started to emerge. Um, Runic Control, as you guys can tell here with Runic, um, Labyrinth, Trap Trick, all of them played a whole bunch of trap cards. Runic, they played Floodgates. Labyrinth, they played a whole bunch of fun Floodgates. And obviously Trap Tricks, they play a whole bunch of trap cards. Some of them are Floodgates. The other ones are just big stop summon stops or negates. So I can understand where they wanted to ban this. Helps them release more decks, all the all this other stuff. But I think you come back. Especially with the, the fear of red reboot. People have to play around it. Like judgment is still a card that exists. Judgment does everything that red reboot does, except your opponent can't set a card to their side of the field. And they can still activate trap cards. But judgment is oppressive because it stops summons too. I think if you're going to ban Red Reboot, you're going to have to cut down Judgment because Judgment's way way more powerful. I understand you can't activate Judgment from your hand, but stopping a summon is even better. Red Reboot is good because you can activate it from your hand, but most trap decks are going first anyway. And if this is at one, it's harder to see. Just like Pot of Prosperity, it's not going to be as easy to see. I understand you get that lucky top deck that can win you the round, but Red Reboot, I think, is fine, but that's just a Copium thing. I don't really... I think it's different. That's my copium. Banned is Diablosis the Mind Hacker. Whoever made this card is absolutely stupid. Who makes a card that says banish, then banish more? Oh, and by the way, we just released some new cards called Kestir. Every time a card is banished, lock a zone. And I'm, I'm looking over here because you guys are on this monitor right here. This monitor right over here. So... I don't know why they would make a card like this. I understand it's they probably didn't think about it when they printed it. Whatever. But it was printed recently. Diablosis the Mind Hacker is the problem with Cash Tier decks. It, it involves the 5 zone lock and the 9 zone lock. It's the reason why. It's a quick effect banish. It banishes cards off the extra deck and it banishes cards on the top of the deck. Equal to the amount of cards banished. So if that doesn't say zone lock and deck out. I don't know what it's saying, because you literally can just banish, I, th I don't remember how much it is, it's like 3 or 6, somewhere around there, out of your opponent's extra deck, and then you make your opponent banish 3 more cards from their deck. So you literally banish, zone lock, banish again, zone lock. That's 2 zone locks, 1 activation. Alright, and especially since Shanger Era can banish a card to zone lock, which is fine, but... Shanger Era can banish a card to zone lock your opponent, that's only 1. It only gets 1 activation. But when a card is banished, Diablosis activates, banish more. Now you see where this is going. You banish, 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 banish. Now your opponent has five zone lock. Or if you go on to their turn, on their on their turn, you just activate all your quick effects, all your trick effects activate. Now you're locking four more zones. Your opponent can't play the game. Diablosis is a really problematic card. I don't think it should have been printed, to be honest with you. Especially since they knew that Cashier was coming out. This card is ridiculous. It needs to be banned. Just ban it. That's my opinion. Gazelle the three. Salmon Great. I understand. I love that deck. Salmon Great best deck. I'm putting it back together, so expect a, de a deck list sometime soon. It's in... I forgot to turn on my light. But it's in this deck box right here. Putting it together very slowly. Because I don't have all the cards for it yet. But see, here's Sign at Mining. I'm putting the deck back together really, really, really slowly. Um, another card should be banned, Runic Fountain. And listen to me for this one. I'm not trying to cause a whole bunch of strife. Runic became an engine, right? So with Runic Fountain, that's why Runic Sprite, Runic Nicteria, all these other decks that play the Runic engine are so freaking strong. Unless you're playing Runic Floodgate, then it's also the reason why it's so strong. Tell me why a card like Pot of Desires has to be at 2. When you can literally shuffle back cards with Runic Fountain and draw 4. And my, it's my point exactly. That's what makes decks so freaking strong. And sprites, um, I'm pretty sure you play the Runic Engine, you play the sprite cards, and you play a whole bunch of hand traps. The Runic cards shuffle back, you draw 4, you draw your hand traps. Now your opponent has an even harder time to deal with your board. Because now they have to deal with your runic spells that are negating and popping cards. They have to deal with your your sprite cards that are negating and destroying cards. And they also have to deal with cards like IP Mascarena. They have to deal with cards like um, Totally Awesome. 
they have to deal with all those cards in the sprite build. And then when it comes to the Nacheria build, they're doing basically the same thing where they're playing hand traps with it, um, shuffling back, drawing four, drawing all their hand traps. The, your opponent has to deal with cards like Nacheria um, Barkeon, all the runic spells that negating and banishing, um, Nat Beast, and it's just spell cards. They have to deal with all that other un unfun stuff to have you play the game. Which is, it's not fair to anybody. And I think Runic Fountain deserves to be banned because, if, in my opinion, Runic Fountain is equal to Max C. Because as soon as I activate Runic Fountain, I shuffle back. I'm drawing four at the end of my turn. And now you're at a, now my opponent's at a severe disadvantage. I got these four cards in hand. What could they be? I'm not discarding them like Card of the Mize makes me do. Or Into the Void, I'm not discarding them. So I got four cards in my hand. One, one could be an Ash Blossom. One could be an Imperm. One could be a Ghost Bell. You know, you never know. And especially, oh, you, you broke my board? Last card could be evenly matched. My, this is my point exactly. You're drawing four off of this card. I'm pretty sure it's four. If not, you're drawing two or more cards off of this card for more advantage. And I know cards that draw are really problematic in this game, so just ban it. This card's ridiculous. Um, And next is Sprite Starter. I know I play this deck, but it, I bring it to one. And I'm... And I'm going to explain myself being a sprite player. Excuse me. Starter is the card that should have gone, not elf. Um, if elf went, I so because elf went, I understand why they did it. It indirectly hurts tier limit, and sprite were able just to infinite revive back toad, especially since Rona Toad was still legal, which is not anymore. And you'd make two toads and infinitely recycle them back. It was ridiculous. But now, if you're looking at sprites, starter is the card that you want to hit. I understand that you don't deal with starter anymore. You play e Telly, Except you're summoning Gamma and it's a brick if you have it in your hand. Other than you have to draw the e Telly. So other than that, you're wasting two cards in your hand for an e Telly. Other than starter, you're just summoning out a card from your deck. It doesn't matter if it's in your hand because you can't summon anything from your hand. You're locked in the twos for the rest of the turn, but it doesn't really matter when, oh, um, I just played in the nib, you nib me. I'm like, okay, I never used my normal summon, and I still have starter in my hand, so I'm just gonna make the whole board again. So if you get if you get what I'm saying, starter is the reason why sprites are so good, other than the runic engine. So here, we're going based off the runic fountain gets banned, right? Sprite starter is the next thing for sprites. It makes the deck less powerful. And still makes the deck good. This is not going to kill the deck unless you ban starter. Then you're going to most likely kill the deck. But we have Itali in the game. We can replace the other two starters with Itali. I think it's fine to um, limit starter to one. Like I said, you use starter and you say you haven't used um, starter yet or your normal summon. And you haven't used blue or anything like that. You're just using all the other ones like like red and carrot. or uh, You use to, um, swap frogs effect to discard to summon. All this other stuff, right? So you used all that. You're, you didn't conduct your normal summon. You didn't use Blue's effect. You didn't use Jet's effect. Now you're just going to activate Starter, Summon Blue, Blue effect, add Jet, Summon Jet, Jet effect, add Double Cross, make Gigantic, effect a Gigantic, all this other stuff. Because the other way, you can actually bait into the nib if you're, you know your opponent's playing it just by making um, Sprint first. And dumping a random card like Plague Spreader Zombie and then using Plague Spreader to come back. That's your fifth summon. Your opponent has to stop you. So they have to stop you there or else they if they wait for the starter, that's a different story. But starter is the reason why the deck is so good because it can play through the interruptions with starter. You interrupt me so much. I'm, I'm sitting there. I'm using all these effects. I summon a whole bunch of hard cards inside the field. You starter. Bam. All the Everything you just did didn't mean anything. I'm still playing the game. Starter's the reason why sprites are so good. And you can also make an argument in this position to put blue on the list at one, maybe two, because blue enables you to search and keep going. But in my opinion, it is starter. Starter goes to one, and that's what I'm thinking about this whole thing. But hope you guys liked the video. Please let me know what you guys would also add to this list. I'm pretty sure it's a good list. Like I said, the, the Copium, Called By, and Red Reboot. That's something I've been wanting for a while. Um, I could have put Max C on there. I've been like, yo, I think Konami can try out Max C for a format and see how terrible it goes. Which is fair. 
Try out Maxi for a format, see how terrible it goes, and you're going to want to pull your hair out. But that that's just a joke. I'm not, I'm, I actually don't want Maxi unbanned. I said a couple, um, couple ban lists ago, but that's whatever. When the ban list does come out, I will react to it. And of course, I already submitted my deck list for the YCS, and I'm guessing the ban list is going to come out right before then. And I hope it's going to be in effect after. If not, I have to change my deck list, which is like almost impossible unless they let me do it on the site. So, again, let me know what you guys think. This is my prediction. Ignore the copium, but this is my prediction of cards that could be changed on the ban list. There could be others. I'm not very well versed in most other decks, but I know these cards, specifically in the short run of things, are probably going to be where they're going to be. And most people say Fountain is not going to be banned. It's going to be at 1. But you can search the damn thing anyway. So I think it's going to get banned. It stops most engines. You can't search it out. It's gone. Get rid of it. Like the video. Subscribe if you want more. Turn on the notification bell so you can see when I upload next. I will do a ban list reaction video. So make sure you guys turn on the notification bell and subscribe. So you guys can see when I do that. Because I generally react pretty well to... In my opinion, I react pretty well to ban list. So when a card gets banned or when a card comes unbanned, I'm like, holy shit. So we're just going to say like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. So you guys know when I upload. Uploading and doing this, I love it. It's so much fun. I want to try to do it as much as I can. And I work. I work a lot. And I try to do it as much as I can. I want to try to get to that 1,000 subscriber mark. But 500 first. We're aiming for 500 first before that 1,000. I want to try to make this, you know my main gig and have work be my, my side gig, if you guys know what I'm saying. I want to try to make this my thing, and I also have downloaded Master Duel again. I'm going to try to play on my own time just to get, get gems built up and all this other stuff so I can make decks for you guys and I can actually start playing the game. And then obviously when I make this my side gig or my main gig, whatever it might be, I can start buying gems and actually be able to afford it to be able to make more decks for you guys. And I actually am planning on live streaming Master Duel for you. So again, subscribe so you guys know when I'm, I'm live streaming. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.